Multicolor, multi-material 3D printing. There's really no perfect implementation out there. Some are better than the others. There's always gonna be pros and cons. However, the Bamboo Lab AMS system is probably one of, if not the best, commercial off-the-shelf solution out there. Now, in my experience, it's been near 100% reliable when it comes to multicolor printing. However, it does have some downsides. Pull Buddy's nerfic, and there's always gonna be pros and cons to every setup. But with the AMS in particular, it's like my child. It's a little bit finicky and picky when it comes to what it eats. So let's take a look at the feeder itself and let's see what some of the issues are. So how the AMS functions, it has four banks for material. So you can load four spools into it. And the best thing about it is it auto rewinds the spool as it retracts the filament. For those that have used DIY implementations for multi-materials such as the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder or the Prusa MMU unit, you know keeping those spools round can be a little bit of a pain. The AMS handles that automatically. But because of that, when it comes to spool compatibility, that's kind of the downside with their setup. If a spool's a little too big, too small, or even if it's just a little too full, you may run into compatibility with the AMS unit. However, this is also a 3D printer, and guess what? Now we have an option to print a solution to help improve compatibility. So let's go to the bench and take a look at it. Okay, so let's open the AMS up and take a look. So we open the lid up, and inside you can see we have our four banks for the spool holders. Uh, we have our feed gears up front, we have rollers in the back, some stuff underneath, and we have this plastic um, body here. And we have two components here, we have the outer body and then the inner body here where the spools ride. So what we're going to do is replace that inner body part with some 3D printed parts. And these are available off printables and this is the Hydra AMS system. So essentially what we're doing is we are taking the AMS apart, removing all the electronics, removing that inner shell, and we're gonna replace it with this 3D printed shell, reinstall all the electronics and put it back together. Now, if you do this correctly, you're not gonna damage anything and it's 100% reversible. So for those worried about warranty support in the future, I won't tell if you won't tell. So for the bill of materials for this, it's quite simple. You're gonna to need to print these three printed parts. You can of course print all of these on the Bamboo Lab system. I printed them in PLA. Uh, the parts aren't gonna be in a warm environment. There's not a lot of wear on them. So really any plastic will work. They do print vertically without support as well. So you don't have to worry about painting on any supports. However, you do need to ensure that you have very good layer adhesion and I highly recommend printing with a large brim. You don't want these falling over. So I printed this middle piece here on my Bamboo Lab X1C in some Polymaker PLA. And then these outer two pieces here were printed on the P1P in some Jesse PLA. You're also gonna need some M3 screws. Uh, anything between 15 and 25 millimeters will work. It's just to hold these three pieces together. And everything else that you're gonna need for assembly comes out of the AMS itself. So the first step for the assembly of this is the disassembly of the AMS and removing the inner frame. Now, there is a guide on Bamboo Lab site on how to do this, I'll have this link below. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. When unhooking the wires and anytime you're removing multiple of the same item, make sure you number or label them to make reassembly easier. Now this is a newly released mod, so I'm working off the V1.0 release. And with many community derived mods for things, there's always gonna be revisions in the future. So make sure you check the patch notes and release notes uh, for this if you decide to do this yourself, just in case there are improvements and changes in the future. Now, if you plan on doing this mod to a V1 or V2 version of the AMS system, where you had the cracking parts and you did the fix where you printed off some components and you glued them in place to repair and reinforce the cracking frame, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to easily pop off those front feed gear idler assemblies. Uh, you're gonna have to break that printed part off to get those out. So that, in that case, it is destructive when it comes to the disassembly, unfortunately. So we've got it all apart, now we gotta put it all back together but with the new frame. So first thing we're gonna have to do is take our three printed parts and we're gonna have to put these together. So they, they don't push together, they have tabs, they actually slot together. So you may need a little bit of force to get these together. And then after you have your three parts together, you're gonna use your M3 screws and you're gonna screw them together. Now you're just screwing into plastic here so be careful not to over tighten your screws, rip the thread out. Okay. 
After that is done, we reinstall our RFID boards. Now you may have to trim off the hot glue that was on them because now they are friction fit. Going to reinstall our filament feeders here. Uh, the tube and the wire go through the middle. And there we go. So the four filament feeders are installed. All the wires are in the right spot. And we need to install the front rollers. Now remember there are gears here, so make sure they line up with the feeders and they just snap into place. Make sure everything spins freely. Good there. Okay, flip it over. We're gonna reinstall the, uh, the filament uh, manifold part here. Yep. So I'm not sure what's going on with mine here. Um, I am using a early version of the AMS here, um, but these two PTFE tubes are not long enough to reach the middle here. So I'm just gonna quickly swap them out for some longer ones. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to remind those that don't seem to remember that, but a PTFE tube is a consumable. It does wear out. So make sure you keep this stuff on hand if you do a lot of 3D printing, especially with something like an AMS here or something that relies on constrained filament paths uh, through Bowden tube that you're probably gonna have to end up replacing these from time to time. So keep that in mind. There we go, more betterer. And just give your Bowden tube a tug, make sure it's locked into place once that's all done. So now we're going to reinstall our controller board here. And then afterwards, we're gonna connect everything back up. And hopefully while connecting everything, it's nice and easy because you've gone ahead and labeled your wires. Now, when it comes to wire organization, you can stuff these wires under PTFE tube to keep everything in place. Okay, so we've got these two wires. These connect to our big shell. And now we're ready to drop this in, make sure everything's nice and connected, make sure everything's organized, because uh, otherwise you're gonna have to take this apart to do troubleshooting. So slot in from the front first. You're gonna wanna connect your wires at the back here. Make sure it's seated at the bottom, make sure nothing's pinched. You're gonna reinstall the two screws that hold the frame into the shell. So after we get the frame installed back in the shell, we can put our rollers in whatever position we need them to be. And now we have compatibility for more spools. So we're good with spools anywhere from 120 millimeters to 205 millimeters. Those will now be compatible. Uh, spools that used to not fit too well, like these Jesse PLA spools, because we're now good up to 75 millimeters width. Uh, we now have clearance for them. And spools that used to be too full uh, to fit and they would rub on the uh, the feeding gears up front. Well, because this new frame has them canted back a couple degrees, we now have clearance there. Now, nothing uh, comes for free. And after doing this mod, you are gonna run into some issues with certain configurations, with certain types of spools loaded, you're no longer gonna be able to close the lid. So if you live in a humid environment, and you're relying on this as a dry box because this mod also removes the desiccant holders. Uh, you may want to hold off on doing this mod. So let's go ahead and install this on the printer and do a test print. And would you look at that, we have ourselves a cute little happy Kirby print. So the system works and really, 
why wouldn't it? We're using the same motor, same electronics, same gearing, same idlers, same bearings. All we've really done is changed out this one plastic injection molded part for a 3D printed part with some different geometries and dimensions. So the underlying mechanics that make the AMS as good as it is haven't really changed. All we've done is made it compatible with more different types of filament. So I've gone through my inventory of spools and pretty much all the spools that I used to have that didn't quite fit the AMS, like these Jesse PLA spools, they fit just fine now. Um, no issues feeding from them. I used a couple of those filaments for the Kirby print. Uh, bigger spools though, such as these Replitech spools that I like, they sell filament in 600 meter increments. It comes out to about 1.5 kilograms. These are still a little too big. It is what it is. And when it comes to smaller, smaller spools, um, unfortunately I only have this one size on hand. This is a 250 gram sample spool filament. While it does fit dimensionally on this axis, the spool is a little too narrow and it rides a little too close to the front. So it kind of catches on the feed mechanism and it doesn't quite feed reliability. But if you had wider spools, 500 gram spools, you'll probably be okay. So if you have an AMS system and you're looking to increase uh, spool compatibility with it, there's really no downside to doing this mod. Yes, with certain spool sizes and certain setups, you're not going to be able to close the lid fully, but there's a 3D print to fix that luckily because it's a 3D printer and we 3D print things and you could probably fix it with a 3D print. So if you want to still be able to close the lid after doing this mod, just, just do a print and it'll, you can do it. It's a 3D printer. It's what we do. If you want to check out an open source multi-material system that's expandable and customizable, why not check out the Enrage Rabbit Carrot Feeder? I built one last year and did a review on it. Link right here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new. If you want to help support the channel, content I create, things I do, links in the description. Make sure you like the smash button on the way out. Cheers.